wow, hello, hi, okay, amazing. That's so, you know what, what a beautiful crowd, probably. I don't know, I can't see you. I, you're gorgeous, I assume, you know? <laughs> it's like your aura, beauty, that's how I feel. It's, it's a very vain aura, and I, I am, a, a, yes, that's, you're serving. You're serving, you're serving aura, bitch, I love it. No, this is a true story. I never wear my glasses, and I went to go get my, um, my, my driver's license in LA. And I walked in, and they had like that vision test, you know the one, the letters, the scrambled, scrambly, scrambly. Um, I looked up, I read the line for the first time, and he was like, no. <laughs> I read it a second time, no. <laughs> I read it a third time, he said close enough and passed me. <laughs> It's like, yeah, go for it. So if you're out there and you're like, who is driving like that? It very well might be me. Probably not. <laughs> Big city, could be. <laughs> oh man, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm a very confusing person for people to know what to make of me. I got the soul of a Jane Austen protagonist, body of an ice road trucker, right? <laughs> it's like, is he hairy there? Yes, where, exactly. <laughs> nah. And my voice too. People think my voice means I'm nice. Doesn't. Just means I'm a bottom, that's it. <laughs> means I'm the receptive partner in gay anal sex. Whoa, uncomfortable. Imagine my discomfort, the receptive partner in gay anal sex. It's not that fun at first. It's always fun later, but not at first. And I'm tired of lying. Can we just agree sex is gross? Sex is gross. Sex is gross. Sex is gross. It's also not Pride Month, so I want to do one for the other people in the room. Okay, ready? Straight is great. Straight is great. Straight. You guys aren't committing, and that's why you're losing, okay? God. Not even, I'm even confused generationally. Do you know like the difference between millennial Gen Z? Do you know it? It's either you remember a life before computers or after computers, or you remember life before 9-11, after 9-11. You wanna know what my very first memory was? 9-11. <laughs> In a computer lab, I was learning to type. I was sitting there and the teacher, she had the TV on, she looked me straight in the eyes and she said, you're gonna remember this for the rest of your life. She cursed me. <laughs> Mrs. Glover, I don't know me yet. It was so rude, first off, but also like, not a bad baseline, you know? It makes me, people are like, he's pretty sad. I'm not that sad. I just like, it was like the starting point, you know? It was like, but it's, it's like a nice framework. Like you're in traffic, it's been two hours. You're like, oh, it's so annoying. Could be worse. Could be 9-11. Could be 9-11. It's been that way from the beginning. It's crazy. I spend so much time in traffic, you guys, so much. And every now and then I think about leaving this rat race, moving to a small town, getting a nine to five, buying a house, dying in that house, and coming back as a ghost to haunt the family that moves in after me. Anyone else? Just me. No, and here's the thing. I don't want to be a spooky ooky ghost. No, ma'am. I want to be a Victorian ghoul, wandering, staring forlornly in the distance. Just so very sad. <laughs> and whenever the kid that moves into the room that was my home office, I've planned this. Can you tell? He's gonna move in, he's gonna see me, he's gonna be like, oh no, run to his dad. Papa, Papa, why is that ghost so sad? <laughs> his dad's gonna get down on one knee, look him straight in the eyes and say, hey kiddo, we're all sad. Today is 9-11 and you're learning to type. <laughs> I'm a time traveling ghost making more of myself. Hell yeah. It's very sad, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's, <laughs> My name is Dominic, but you can call me Sir. <laughs> I am what they call a Dom Top Daddy Leather Poet, all right? <laughs> Let me break that down for you dumb sub cucks, all right? <laughs> First off, I'm dominant. That means I'm what? In charge. <laughs> Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, hell yeah. <laughs> Second off, I'm a top. What that means is I do have gay sex, but I am what? The man, that's right. <laughs> I said what you all were thinking. <laughs> oh no, did that hurt some of your sensibilities? Oh no. Well, art's supposed to hurt a little bit. <laughs> and you may remember I am also a poet. <laughs> all right. Bet you know you're getting art jammed up your cram holes. Hell yeah. People like to ask me, when did you start 
doing poetry, you know? I just like my dumb little idiot bitch men to know I'm also a man with feelings. <laughs> that being said, this first selection, any of you idiots familiar with Ruby Coors Milk and Honey? Just curious. <laughs> This is from a collection I entitled, Milk Me, Comma, Honey. <laughs> it's entitled, The Daffodil. Sweaty walls. Sweaty halls. Naked men showing balls. On the phone with my ex. Why is life only sex? When I was five, seek and find, nothing to hide, feel alive. The daffodil, hell yeah! <laughs> Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Sometimes that voice in my head when I'm writing poetry that calls me a dumb little bitch, I like to think it's my father. It's the only time we speak. This next one is, a for, is another collection, of course. I don't know if you are familiar with Walt Whitman's Song of Myself. Idiots. <laughs> this is from one I entitled Song of My Sex, right? It's actually from your perspective. You're the one saying it to me. It's called Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, do me more. Daddy, Daddy, till I'm sore. Daddy, Daddy, call me dumb. Daddy, Daddy, till you come. That's right. Daddy, Daddy, don't be a tease. Daddy, Daddy, like Socrates. Daddy, Daddy, call me son. Daddy, Daddy, like Ralph Waldo Emerson. Daddy, daddy, please be thorough. Daddy, daddy, like Sir David Walter, thorough, right? <laughs> daddy, daddy, I am lost. Daddy, daddy, don't know the cost. Daddy, daddy, cause me pain. Daddy, daddy, I deserve shame. Yeah. Yeah, you do. That's the end of that one. Hell yeah. yeah. Say thank you. Thank you. You're I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm feeling a little overdressed. Still overdressed. It's surprisingly difficult to take off a pair of underwear over boots. Still overdressed. You might notice that these particular undies actually have a little bit of color in them. That is because in addition to being a rather accomplished poet, I am also... a rather accomplished painter. <laughs> Please allow me to read you a poem. Recite, rather. <laughs> Even daddy fucks up sometimes. <laughs> Fuck yeah, say thank you. Thank you. You're fucking welcome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Are any of you fucking idiots familiar with Maya Angelou's And Still I Rise? <laughs> this is from a collection I entitled And Still I Rise, parentheses, different connotation. <laughs> Lovely, lonely me, met lonely, lovely you, and all our loneliness together sprouted lovely too. And then I fucked your throat. It's a dick. <laughs> You're fucking welcome. Anyone want this? I'll dead ass give it away right now. Hell yeah. Frame that shit. If anyone wants to find me after the show, I'll be signing some douches. If you want to save it, maybe it'll be worth something someday. If you want to use it, maybe you'll be worth something tonight. Yeah. Now, I, uh, I'm originally from a very small town in the South. My dad is a pastor, which makes me a stereotype baby. Yeah. You've seen those movies, they are sad. I am not. I just, you know, just don't be. I think I got the voice of an Eeyore spirit of a Tigger, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I was actually even a middle school pastor myself for a while, if you can believe it. I was. I was a middle school pastor. I trained the bigots of tomorrow. That was me. <laughs> You're welcome, and I did such a good job. 99% of them, beautiful people, love watching them grow up from afar. 1% send me text messages saying, it takes a lot to live in sin like that. <laughs> and you know what, they're right, so thanks for acknowledging. <laughs> No, I, I am still pretty close with my folks. Um, I, I love my mom. I call, was on the phone with her. I accidentally said, damn, in front of her, which I think is the lowest of the cuss words. I don't know, we can rank them later, come and find me. <laughs> I said, damn, and she said, Ryan, I don't like when you cuss. That's what she says. She doesn't say curse, cuss. No hard R, cuss. She was like, Ryan, I'm worried about what's coming out of your mouth. And I was like, well, if you're worried about what's coming out. <laughs> I'm not gonna finish it, because that's rude. She's my mother. <laughs> no, it's so mean. I should not be using that, that, but I love it, I love it. Here's the thing, here's the thing. They paid for my cell phone bill for years. Blood money, I used it to cuss. <laughs> No, I, I am actually still Christian. Weekends, holidays, STD tests, you gotta be. It's scary, ah, you know? Credit score checks, Father God Almighty, ooh. <laughs> but I've since uh, adopted this LA religion we all share. Like, I got a psychic, her name's Tanya, shout out Tanya. She'll know if I don't. <laughs> the third eye, it's real. <laughs> and I love astrology. Any astrology heads in the house? Hell yeah, I am too. Get this, I'm done dating Leos. No more Leos, moving on to Marcos's, Bradley's, Jorge's, Jose's. Tossing a Kimberly, I'll try it again, I'm Aquarius. <laughs> We're open. Uh, people sometimes like to toss the Bible at me. I know it better than they do, so I like to grab it, Woo, toss it right back. <laughs> you guys wanna hear what my favorite Bible verse is? Yes. yes, okay. Deuteronomy 25, 11 through 12. When two men are engaged in fisticuffs, <laughs> one of their wives shall not grab the testicles of the opposing player, Elsewise, her hand shall be removed. Show her no mercy. That's real, down to the no mercy part. That means that back in the day, there were these two dudes rustling, right? One of their wives walked up and was like, and he went, ow, that hurt. Cut off her hand. And someone went, whoa, dude, maybe we shouldn't. And someone else went, no, do it. No mercy. And then they did it. And then they were like, oh my God, this keeps happening. We gotta write it down somewhere. And then they did in the book they got reprinted the most and I taught it to middle schoolers. You're welcome. Oh, oh my God, you cunty little bitchy little slutty little fuck. <laughs> oh my God, I fucking love you. I love you so much I fucking despise you. You know what I mean? Like you're that crap on the ground in New York City and it's like sludgy and you're like, why the fuck is it that color? And it's like the piss and the oil and it's like, oh, why does it smell like that? Elephant piss in my nose, that's you. I fucking missed you, bitch. I know I'm not supposed to say anything, but I'm so sorry your uncle died. Oh, it's so sad, but tonight's about you, bitch, okay? So say I'm a bad bitch, say it, I'm a bad bitch. I'm a bad bitch, I'm a bad bitch, I'm a bad bitch. Fuck yes, fuck yes. Do you know this DJ? DJ Linguini Fuego from Sweden? Oh my God, it's so cute you don't fucking know that girl. It's so cute. That's like fat baby behavior. I'm not saying you're fat, I'm saying you're baby. Baby, 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 you're so cute. Oh, oh my God, I almost forgot. Look what I got us. I snuck it in, I snuck it in. Cha, 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 cha. <laughs> okay, one for you. One for me. And one to share. I'm kidding, we don't share, girl. We never share. Who are we? I'm sorry, is the song saying I'm glad your uncle is dead? No, like it totally is. That's so fucking specific. Did you ask for this? Oh my God, do you know the DJ? Oh my God, does the DJ hate you? So it's just like one of those things, like running into your barista at Epcot and you're like, oh my God, hi girl. Got it. Ignore the words, just 
vibe, 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 dead, 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 dead. Oh my god, am I a bad friend to you? I'm not, right? Because, like, no offense, I could be with people I enjoy, but I'm here with you. <laughs> no offense, I said no offense. I'm totally rolling, yeah. I found some white stuff on the ground, took it. <laughs> I was like, it's Molly, hopefully, and it was, girl. Yes! Uh, oh my god, why, do you want some? Oh my god, I'm out, I'm sorry. I didn't think you wanted any because you're like sad or whatever. Oh, this music, is, you like feel it in your nipples, you know? It's like nipple music. I go, ah, it's amazing. Oh, 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 what? When? Where? Why? Who? Can I be honest with you for a second? Because uh, lately I've been having kind of a rough go. You see, you're not the only one who's sad. I myself saw my eyes in the mirrors the other night. I saw my eyes in the first club. I was like, those aren't my eyes. Second club, also not my eyes. <laughs> Feels like somewhere along the way I've lost myself, you know? And maybe that's not so different to how you lost your uncle. <laughs> maybe we're just specks of life that become specks of death, you know? Maybe we're stars in the sky until we're sand in the ground. Maybe we're basically just a walking graveyard. Do you ever give it a blowjob with lip fillers? <laughs> it's like sucking a turtle's foot through a wet balloon. <laughs> Your uncle dead, dead, dead. Ignore the words. Ignore the words. Just smile. No crying. Yay! I love you like Gandhi. <laughs> Okay, so the thing about Linguini Fuego is he's like a storyteller. So it sounds like this uncle character just died <laughs> because he got fucked so good. I realize how that's like dressing your situation. I'm just gonna tell you right now, my vibes are here, your vibes are here. There's one thing I've learned this year, it's to protect your energy, okay? So baby, love you, I'm gonna go for me. Love you, bye. Come on, fuck me hard. Um, I am very bad at choosing people to date. Anyone here in love? Yay for you. Love is real for you. I don't believe in it, but yay! So, get this. What do a drug dealer, a snake breeder, and a cult member all have in common? I dated him. It was one guy! <laughs> he was also a felon, yeah. Here's how that one ended. I got a call at 3 a.m. He said, hey Ryan, I'm going to Tijuana. Want to join? I said no, and then he hung up on me and I've never heard from him since. <laughs> so when I'm out here, it shows. I don't care if you laugh. I'm just looking for Tom. <laughs> Let me know if you see him, please. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I am a very superstitious person as established, right? Very superstitious. And my biggest superstition is that whatever's happening on New Year's Eve will affect the rest of your year, the 31st through the 1st. So I like to plan it out. The 31st, I was like, let me take an adventure. I have a crush on a boy. He invites me on a trip. So far, so good. With his friends. So far, so bad. <laughs> anyway, I get there. Long story short, the details aren't interesting. Cocaine gets involved. I'm not a cocaine fan, personally. Makes me too happy. I don't trust it. <laughs> I swear to God, I just need my joy cut with a little bit of sorrow. And it's just like, okay, this is safer. I don't know what to say. But cocaine gets involved, other drugs get involved, and as the clock strikes midnight, I am calming them down in the bathtub, calming them down, going, shh, baby, shh, baby, shh, 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 shh. It wasn't like a, ooh, shh, baby, shh, no. It was shh, baby, shh, baby. I was giving a cocaine bath. What does that mean for the rest of my year? I need to know, because it's coming. <laughs> Bizarrely, not my worst bathtub drama. Can you believe that? <laughs> The year 2022, the location, Coachella. I'm chilling. My best friend Molly, her best friend Ritalin, AO, right? <laughs> I'm there and uh, they're doing like a, like a test before one of the shows and there's this big iceberg on the screen. And without thinking, I tell my buddy Mike who I'm standing next to, I'm like, well, it is Titanic weekend. Do we know what Titanic weekend is? <laughs> Feels like one person might, which is cool. <laughs> it's not the anniversary of the Titanic, which you may have guessed. 
Titanic Weekend is where you get uh, invited by, uh, well, you're dating someone a decade and a half older than you. He invites you over to his house. He says he's got something special planned, Titanic Weekend. When you enter, and he's redecorated his apartment to look like the cabin on the Titanic. Titanic Weekend? He gives you period-appropriate clothing to wear. You're... <laughs> You're gonna be a supportive boyfriend. You've never had a boyfriend before, why not, you know? So you start walking around looking like a newsie. <laughs> Titanic weekend, no, just me? So, so, so you go and he has is, he is prepared the meal that they served the night the Titanic went down. The music is playing that they found based on the sheet music that went down with the Titanic, Titanic weekend. I'm starting to think I'm the only one that's been through this. <laughs> He sets a timer. You say, what's that for? He says, don't worry about it. <laughs> Titanic weekend. <laughs> the timer goes off. <laughs> he says, right this way. He takes you to the bathroom. He's filled the bathtub with ice and ocean water. The man lives in Hollywood. That's not near the ocean. He had to drive all the way out, fill a bucket with uh, ocean water, walk it up three flights of stairs. His elevator was broken. Dump it in and dump it in ice. Titanic weekend. Am I the only one who's been in love? <laughs> he says, get in. And you're like, okay, can I take my clothes off? He goes, no, they couldn't. <laughs> Which caused an issue in my brain, because it's like, could they not though? Because like, it took a while. So maybe there were different camps, you know? Like maybe there was one camp who was like, let's get it off. One was like, no, let's leave it on. I don't know. But it was like a shirts and skin situation, maybe. <laughs> And I was shirts all the way, so I got in. I got in, I did. Anyway, uh, he times me in the bathtub. I eventually get out. He says, anyway, uh, wanna fuck? I say no. <laughs> and then eventually we still do, because I am a good boyfriend. I will be a good boyfriend. We dated for two years after this. <laughs> I didn't say I was good at dating. My ex told me I talked too much like a woman. Big words coming from a guy who talks like a fucking idiot, am I right? <laughs> Fuck that guy, absolutely not. <laughs> no, um, I, uh, I don't know. When I was growing up, there was this religious movement called He is Greater Than I. The he was capitalized, the I was lowercase. And the he was all about making God this big, huge thing, bigger than you, sucking up all the air. Lowercase I, that was you. How small can you be? How worthless and tiny can you be, you know? That was what it was, a lowercase i, super messed up. It's wrong grammar, right? <laughs> if there's one thing God likes, it's rules. Right off the bat, the boy made 10 of them. He handed them down to his guy, Moses. He was like, yo, Moses, these are the 10 commandments. Take them down to your boys, the Israelites, and then he did. And if you read them in the modern context, it really sounds like a child teaching you to play hide and go seek. Let me explain. Number one, I get to make the rules, number one. Number two, Nobody else gets to make any rules. It's like, okay, girl, we heard you the first time. <laughs> Number three is nobody says anything bad about me. <laughs> Which I figured based on one and two, sure, okay. <laughs> Number four, when I want to take a break, we take a break. <laughs> Number five, also, mom and dad, still in charge. He doesn't get to murder till number six, you guys. Number six is murder, and I'm no creator of the universe, but if I was making a list, I feel like murder would be at least two or three. Yeah, but I, number 10 is my favorite. Don't be a jealous hoe. Don't be a jealous hoe. Don't be a jealous hoe, no. That's what God says, uh-uh, no jealousy. I love it. But no, I was so good at learning how to be so small and being that lowercase i that I lost complete track of myself. In my 20s, I flailed. I tried everything. And there are just so many voices you can listen to, right? The great journey of my adult life has been learning to capitalize the i, to formulate a version of myself that I can stand to be in love. An impossible task, one that changes constantly. I try out different fonts still, to this day, you know? <laughs> Never do wingdings. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's... It's just been a long process to learn. When I have a problem, I like to look to the past. Our ancestors had this thing called MySpace. 
where you could only choose eight people to care about eight. That's it. You could list them. You could rank them. That's it. It's so freeing. Seriously, there's so many voices. You've got Instagram. You've got Facebook. You've got people to talk to walking down the street. You know, this is a city of millions. Your phone listens to you. If you talk about ramen, it shows you a ramen ad. Crazy. I make a manual list every week of eight people I give a shit about. And I encourage every single one of you to do the same. Only two things have stayed the same on this list. Number one, Billie Eilish. <laughs> Current pop star, future philosopher, okay? Number two, a capital I. Aw, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> no, I, I think the big part of that capitalizing has been me learning the difference between kindness and niceness. And a big difference is you can kindly tell someone to fuck off. So with that being said, thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate the hell out of you. Love. Fuck off. Your fantasy. Your fantasy. Your fantasy. It's your fantasy. Your fantasy. It's your fantasy. We can hug and get drunk. I'll be right back, I promise.